Well, come back. My name is still 57 Bat Sibis, and we're back at it again, beating up cows. But this time, I have at least somewhat of an idea why I'm even doing this. The main reason for that is best explained through this graph. You see, the gray area is what my videos usually are doing. The blue area, well, that's you guys. And with exactly that moderate increase in viewers, a moderate increase in comments is happening, such as my guy Alex here clearing up cows are better suited for early game because of the bones of course it's always about the bones isn't it it's not it's the meat and the cowhide actually but you knew that i didn't now i do because cowhide can be transformed into leather and that will be used to craft my first pieces of armor which now makes a lot more sense actually anyways we're back at the port right in front of veos i hope you remember it's been a while but before we continue one thing maybe the undisputed number one suggestion from you guys was something called rune light and you see i just want to inform you i do have it downloaded it is right here on my desktop actually here look next to the forbidden game but I had to do some setting up account thing where simply clicking steam and start runescape was kind of more appealing just wanted to let you know i heard you but you know i'm lazy as simple as that i don't know how significant the difference is but i'll get to it eventually i'm sure so enough of that we jump right back in where we left things off i got some epic loot so naturally i robbed the epic lamp which i guess that's a sentence of my bucket list not quite a genie or three wishes but i'm allowed to choose a stat which i will be advancing given the fact that i haven't even done all of these things yet nor do i know whether it is a flat amount i'm getting or simply just giving me an additional level it was the safer play to just not interact with this thing and i closed it i was putting more faith into the beginner clue scroll anyways given i am a beginner expecting another epic scavenger hunt across the lands we read the following in a village of barbarians i am the one who guards the village from up high no idea what that means in the slightest nor have I even come across a village of barbarians yet, so I also closed the window. I even consulted the map if there happened to be one nearby, but I don't really think there is. Pretty sure we'll find it eventually. Slightly saddened by that outcome, I'm going for some harbor exploration instead. First thing I come across is a group of people doing synchronized seagull magic, or some, I don't. I have no clue what the hell's going on, to be honest. But as is tradition, the sound effects are nice. I'm assuming that's some type of tourist trap, so I quickly get the hell out of here. Just to find another trio of people looking all the same, it's that. Maybe those are the blue man group I heard so much about, but regardless. Enough of that nonsense. It's time for some heroics. As you know by now, I'm not letting go of any opportunity to help the townsfolk. And yet again, it's on me to save a poor merchant that has a store overran by a bunch of goblins who coincidentally also are a group of three. I don't like this place. Yet again, I make the store a safer place, but the question still remains. Am I really the good guy? Or are goblins merely also just customers and I'm the bad guy? But unlucky for them, this is the only way I get my dopamine points. And also, as you should know, bones. It's always about the bones, isn't it? Well, it still isn't. But there was another store right across the street. Turns out selling fishing equipment. As you know, I've recently come to great wealth, so I reinvest into said fishing equipment and buy myself a rod. Just to then make the unfortunate discovery that you can't just randomly fish in this game. I've later come to realize you need certain fishing spots, which I guess this harbor either doesn't have any or overfishing, I guess. It's a real problem, but oh well, at least I now am already prepared, having a rod and all, you know? With yet another sad result, I think it's time to leave this place. I pass the blue man group and the seagull synchronized magic, all of them still going hard, and we kind of ended up where we started, and have achieved absolutely nothing. So let's take a step back, which means I'll take a lot of steps back to where I came from. I saved the day once more, which I think now conclusively proves my moral standards. They're not that high, but I now knew exactly what to do. I'm pretty much catching up on lost time, essentially. My path was clear, so I clearly followed the path, and I think you can kinda see where this is going, as I'm going towards the cows. I open the gate, and I also close the gate behind me after I enter. You see this cow here? Someone of you did that. You close your doors. Guys, come on. Simple stuff. If you talk to the guy with the sheeps even, 
and complains about it. I sadly don't have that footage right now. Try it yourself. More important though, I'm finally doing what I should have done multiple hours ago, I guess. I bury all the bones and fill my inventory with the remaining meat and cowhide. The former for the cooking skill, the latter for the crafting skill. Allegedly. I'm yet to find out because I kinda don't really know where to go from here. I'm taking the classic step back. On the way back, I already start cooking the food. I really kneel in. If you catch my drift. Patent pending, by the way. I also leveled up cooking! Sorry, I wasn't sure if you could hear me. Okay, okay, the sound jokes, you're getting a bit old. Just like the sounds, oh! Okay, I'm really sorry. So with the meat out of the way, I was now searching for someone or something that could use my cowhide. So we could make that letter that was mentioned. I was hovering absolutely every single icon I could find, but that wasn't really getting me anywhere. Guess it's time once more. State of confusion. We're back. I remembered the loom in the first floor. I gave it a random shot, but surprisingly, that doesn't quite make leather. But yeah, we're worth a try, I guess. I really had no clue where to go. But while I was here, I also found that there is a bank all the way at the top. Looking at all those icons wasn't that bad after all. And wouldn't you know, after a very quick tutorial that I definitely read, I was way richer than I thought I was. My tutorial money was still here. I traded that for the clue scroll that I obviously won't need anywhere soon, I think, and made my way back down in the hopes of finding something, anything really. You see, what I portrayed as me clicking icons and hovering them was actually 10 minutes of just walking around and not really getting anything done. I hope that is some explanation why I kind of postponed the whole cowhide leather thing and just walked into this kitchen instead. Despite the somewhat untraditional kitchen helper, I guess, looks promising. First thing, I just have to compliment the hat. The cook's not too convinced, but I also really love the trousers and everything, you know, the whole idea of hat, apron, stripy trousers, ensemble, it just works. Maybe then saying that he looks kind of like a real cook was maybe over the line, okay, but oh well, mea culpa. But we are quick to find out why he can't take a fucking compliment as he needs some help. The Duke has a party and he is supposed to be bringing a cake which he forgot to buy the ingredients. At least he looks good. Obviously he doesn't have the brains but anyways given the fact that he has children and a goat to look after he can't just get the ingredients himself. I somehow sense a pattern here. I feel like everything just falls apart when I'm not there. It's very interesting. So there was but saying yes and agree to help the poor guy. Little does this guy know I'm quite the cook already if you remember he then tells me where exactly i will find all the things we need we part ways and off we go we are back to heroics again i'm making my way down the path once more as just described by the cook i pass the cows ah <sighs> I could be farming cows right now. And make it to the northeastern farmland that was just mentioned in the kitchen. As I look at all those chickens, collecting the first ingredient is relatively simple as eggs are all across the floor. A bit more exciting, the building right next to it. In expert crafting circles, we call this a mill. Once inside, we talk to Millie, the miller, inside the mill. Funny. But let's be honest, other games would have put Elisa here. Or another Bob. But no, not RuneScape. I think I haven't said that this episode, but I love this game. Nevertheless, after asking the right questions, Millie then teaches me the secret art of stealing wheat off a field. Wasn't my idea, she told me to do it. Followed by the secret art of going to the top floor of the mill. Once there, we fill the hopper with the stolen goods, operate the hopper controls. Afterwards, the secret art of going back down to the first floor. And this is where our stolen goods laundry ends. As I now have a pot of flour and no evidence of stolen wheat whatsoever to be found. Making out like a bandit, there was but one ingredient left. I'm spotting some cows nearby and after my unfortunate accident in the first episode, I now very much know what to do. Thus completing the third ingredient and with that hopefully completing the quest. But you know, there was something I wanted to do earlier. So while we're here, you know, might as well. But my yet again very brave victory over this cow that isn't the best part yet. Watch closely as I right click this tile. Choosing the option I actually want. So no more continuously fighting dudes until the tile is free to use, you know. I know some of you might have a sigh of relief right now after multiple comments of how I should potentially use this mechanic. You can finally continue this whole thing in peace. You're welcome. You see, all this time I didn't even know that you can right click examine, for example, this thistle, which then tells me that it is in fact spiky. This fern is a commonly found fern 
pollen and daisies are commonly found in grassy areas. Wow, thank you. I was completely missing out. How did I even think I was actually playing RuneScape before? Maybe that was the missing link to finally figure out how to make leather. Or maybe it was also finishing yet another one of Adventurer John's tasks. But I was eager to find out, so I head back to town. One thing after another though, there was a party to save. I hand over the definitely not stolen goods. And yet another person saved by me, the hero. Sure, I would be invited to the Duke's party now, right? But turns out I'm, I'm somehow not important enough. I don't, I don't even, don't they know? But maybe one day I'll be important enough. And that finishes the cook's assistant quest, netting me, well, yet another quest point and 300 cooking XP. I had to make a shocking revelation though. The cook not only got all the ingredients, he also took all the containers. But thanks to Millie the Miller in the mill, I make use of the things I learned. And with only the bucket missing that I can't find, I found it would be potentially underground. Well, not quite what I expected, but also not quite what I didn't expect, if that made any sense. And wouldn't you know, a bucket. I'm starting to get this game, I think. I then admired this guy's interior decor, very classy, fits the room perfectly. Then I also steal his boots because, well, I was running quite a lot. I think this is perfect reimbursement. Also, I might monitor this behavior a little bit for now, I think. No offense to Millie, though. I leave the basement, climbing back to daylight. A fairly common occurrence for me, don't worry. And we're on to more adventures. First of all, I have to get rid of the stolen goods. But not before, you know. Now that we made some room, adventurer John has something for us. Eh, starting to look like an actual guy, not gonna lie. But now finally back to what I actually wanted to do in the beginning of this episode. I'm taking yet another very close look at the map. Reason for that being, I still have no clue what to do with the cowhide. I have it now, but where do I go with this? This process generally took a few minutes as I, for the love of it, couldn't figure out where to go. I did find everything, but not what I was looking for. In the end, I found something though that might at least get me a step closer, potentially. I wasn't too sure, so well, yet again, off we go. It was past the cows. I could be farming cows right now. Then past all those chickens. Well, I couldn't help myself here, sorry. Then past the crossroads we explored last time. A beautiful straight with lots of trees. Past a stunning field of cabbage, I think. Another beautiful straight with trees and some angry men. I don't, I don't really know who that is or why he's angry that I'm running past his path, I guess. Well, you know me, I'm not shying away from a little bit of 1v1 combat. Turns out this is the highest level opponent I fought yet, which turns Turns out to make no difference. You know, the hero I am, obviously. And wouldn't you know, a minute 25 later, I yet again reign victorious. So on we go past some form of parade, I think. Looking up where to go real quick. And there it is to the west, something called the Crafting Guild. What happens next is very obvious to you guys. Came obviously as a surprise for me. You must be level 40 or above to enter. I obviously didn't expect that. Also level 40 what? I don't know. I actually still don't know. My assumption is level 40 crafting as my total level already surpasses that point. But as I mentioned earlier, I wasn't 100% convinced of this trip myself. It was just the only option left. And the only reason I even came here, this was the only place where I found something called Tannery, which was the only icon even remotely connected to cowhide or leather. So well, here we are. Yet again, maybe the biggest one so far. State of confusion. Yeah, so here I was right outside the crafters guild with entry denied, but I had one last plan C maybe. A shot in the dark, it kind of made no sense, but at this point I thought to myself, couldn't get worse than this. So my next tragic attempt includes something called the loom, which I found on my way to the guild. As I already mentioned, kind of makes no sense as it's mostly used for weaving, but maybe you're weaving leather in this game, who knows? Anyways, off we go yet again, past the firewall, parade also still going strong. And while I was double checking where to go, you can already hear, the guy's still angry. Still on his road, I guess. So, another minute 15. And we are ready to continue. A little bit further down the road, we arrive at our destination. We enter a beautiful farmhouse. 
with a dog. Incredible. And thanks to my now almost perfected right click examine mechanics, I know that this is the farmer slash sheep liaison officer with an added appeal to give the dog a bone. Well, that's unfortunate because my last bone pretty much went into additional prayer points. But it's a dog. I mean, come on. The things we do for dogs. So obviously I went, got a bone, came back, trying my superb mechanics again. The results do not differ. And then I get that right click of the bone in my inventory. Tree. Incredible. Use it on the sheepdog. Take a bow, I guess. Giving the dog some nice bones. It happily gnaws on them. Terrific. But with all that dog distraction, I almost forgot why I came here initially. I clicked the loom and definitely yet another outcome I didn't expect. This now offers two possible outcomes here. A, you guys told me to do something that I obviously couldn't do, which personally I actually don't think that happened. Also makes no sense from like a game perspective to already lock the beginner stuff kind of pointless. Or B, the loom has nothing to do with leather as expected, which I guess still is more likely. Also, I think this is a very perfect moment to thank you all for that very warm welcome I've got. And part of all that love is multiple people offering me something that is called bonds, which I can then use to get membership for a limited amount of time. And that was not only comments under this video, that was also Twitter DMs. People came into my stream actually while I streamed The Forbidden game and i even had an email I, I never get emails on my youtube email that's that, well th that's a new one regardless as mentioned before due to my poor choice of games so far i'm not used to such a genuine feeling of community you know very interesting place you've got here not gonna lie will take some time to get used to it i feel like but to my actual point for now i will not do that very simple reason the gameplay between the first and this episode had a little bit of a delay. 38 days and 46 minutes to be precise. Not as bad anymore, don't worry. Episodes should be coming a little bit quicker now. So having something that is time gated, maybe not the best idea right now. Also, to be fair, I'm quite overwhelmed still with the bare bones of the beginner part of this game. So let's delay the whole membership thing. But once again, I can't stress this enough. I very much appreciate all the offers. We will get to this eventually, I'm pretty sure. But we have more pressing matters at hand, guys. There's lots of cowhide in my inventory. And during my monologue rambling on about how things are honky-dory, I ran back to the town, actually. Truth be told, I don't know why I did it, but first thing I did, I went back to the bank. Like, I'm, I'm actually not even kidding. I don't know why I did that. I do remember, though, that I then started swapping around a bunch of stuff, mostly because, well, it's happening right here on screen, but also because here I found out that if you bank a bag of fish, it unbags them. And if you then put them out of your bank again, you actually have the fish, each of them, in your bag. Amazing. Right after that, I learned that said fish cannot be cooked. Amazing. I didn't quite trust the game for some reason and tried it with ordinary campfire. Surprisingly, same result. Amazing. Why do I tell you all that? <clears throat> um, okay, I'm sorry. What? It's mostly just a delay strategy because I have to come clean about something. Guys, I'm very sorry. It saddens me deeply to say this, but I cheated. So while my guy was standing here and the world around him kept just moving forward, I tried to figure out what the hell to do with cowhide and how could I finally make something which seems to be a very basic step in the beginning of the game and get my fucking leather. But given my so far very unfruitful endeavors, as you just witnessed, where my best bet was a loom and my second best bet was a closed door, I eventually resorted to a very drastic step. I googled it, something that I tried to avoid for the integrity of this video series, but the doubt eventually got to me if I wasn't like completely wrong about the whole idea of making leather and armor and you know. So well there I was on the wiki where it tells me that looking for an armory wasn't too wrong, I just looked in the wrong direction. But for future reference, I hope to never have to resort to such drastic measures again, as mostly the fun from playing this for me comes from figuring it all out. And a lot of you seem to agree with this notion. Anyways, I cross a very familiar bridge and end up at a gate that I ignored so far because I did not expect that the new area was important anywhere soon. Clicking the gate forces me into conversation. Disgusting. It gets even more disgusting as the 
border guard tells me I have to pay 10 gold to go through here. From the options given to me, not paying the money seemed to be the most enjoyable. A quick analytic glance at the map kind of revealed really quickly that that wasn't an option really I feel like. Even if there is an entrance I didn't really see one. So I kept crawling back to the border guard but first I wanted to know what does happen to my money. I don't want to fund any shady business here or Iron Man but apparently I'm funding the city of Alkari which you know is good enough for me. Well I pay the money and here we are. New area which apparently happens very casually in this game. So I'm strolling casually way over to where it showed Tannery on my map and this is where we meet Ellis. We approach the guy and he informs me that he is a manufacturer of leather. I guess the search is over. Given the options here I ask whether I can buy some. This is the point in time where Ellis then tells me that I should maybe bring some cow hides and he will turn them into leather for one gold per hide. Oh wait. It was at that moment that I realized, remember when I explored the banking system a little bit further? Yeah well that's where all my cowhide is now. But I feel like there was some developer that expected that people with questionable intelligence such as me would also touch this game and put a bank literally almost right next to where I was. Shout out to whomever that decision belongs to. Kudos my guy. So yeah, quick little detour. I get rid of the fish that you can't cook and replace it with cowhide instead. Beautiful. Back to Ellis it is. He once more informs me that he's a manufacturer of leather. Given my current track record, I don't judge him on questioning me remembering that, but he instantly spots the cowhide in my inventory and I finally did it. I wasn't quite sure what I was looking at, so I just pressed the button that says leather. Pretty much what I wanted to do for the past three hours. And there it is, right in my inventory. It might be that my slight lack of intelligence is shining through again as... I haven't quite planned beyond this point. My ideas are as bare as the wasteland we're currently in to paint the picture, you know? As it turns out, what the hell do I do with leather now? I mean, now that I have it, right? <laughs> to be fair, I somehow expected that a tannery also has some form of being able to use the leather in the store. But I was wrong. After hovering pretty much absolutely everything that is in here, nothing worked. I even asked Ellis for some advice, but he just used the opportunity to sell me some more leather. Quite the businessman, I guess. Yet another quick glance at the map. I didn't really find anything that could solve my problems nearby, but I did find a crafting tutor on the other side of the 10 gold gate. In hindsight, I'm really glad I took an oath to figure out things through in-game text rather than, you know, the forbidden tech as going back to the other side was technically completely unnecessary yet here we are i invest some more money into al -Karid. i hope the city really blossoms anywhere soon literally just my fees should already be able to fund a bunch of stuff but i digress there's a crafting class i have to attend so we go up the second floor of the castle we speak to the crafting tutor i take him up on his offer and ask the question at hand here i find out that he would have also told me where i should have gone to get my leather. Unlucky. But wouldn't you know, the information we're actually looking for, once I have some leather, all I need is a needle and a thread and go to work. Don't you'd love to know that the answer was literally standing right here and I will have been using the apparatus right next to the guy before? Unlucky. I vent my frustrations by stealing a dagger and um, uh, never mind. Let's move on. I head on over and consult my trusted store. Turns out they're not running craft essentials in their stock. Unlucky. So back to consulting the map it is and I should find out that once more nearby to where I was the answer is yet again to be found. Meanwhile being on first name basis with the border guards already still have to pay 10 gold though. My god this city is gonna be rich through me alone mostly through my incompetence but anyways off we go once more I cross the town until I find the faithful store and within we meet Domic who offers exactly what we are looking for, needle and thread. We obviously purchase the items. For change into appropriate scenery, I run all the way over to Ellis's place and taking the needle for a test drive, I guess. This window of beautiful choices opens up. Given I have the first three already, I choose number four. 
but turns out not skilled enough yet, which, you know, is, is kind of a meta statement, I guess. So turns out all I can start with are the gloves. So that's what I did. Dopamine points are flooding in and my first piece of armor is created. Needless to say, I was hooked. So I instantly, and some of you might be really proud of this, right clicked to create even more leather and went back to work. I enjoyed this whole thing more and more. Coincidentally, more and more dopamine points came flooding in. It's merely speculation that those two things are correlated to each other. And with merely one last piece of gloves missing for the level up, I ran out of thread. Ah, I love this game. Well, be that as it may, back to Domic it is, stocking back up and finishing the job. Beautiful. I was happy to see that there was a general store right next to where I was. Given the fact I have way more gloves than hands, I gotta get rid of those. And after getting the current pricing of the gloves, I made massive profit, maybe. I mean, who knows? I definitely don't. And thus finally concluding me figuring out how to use cowhide to make a leather and craft my own armor. Even though I can't really use it because the first few armor pieces I can make, I've gotten all of these from Adventure John already. But anyways, as mentioned earlier, I was kind of hooked. And there was that thing that you would have to progress further first to actually use the armor you're making, right? So there was only one logical solution. That's right, my first runescape grind. I felt like this had to happen eventually, given how the game was built, but I didn't expect the very first thing outside of fighting stuff to captivate me that much that I genuinely cared about progressing it. So, well, here we are. Yet again, progressing also the fund of wherever this money goes. I'm still not fully convinced. I was then warming up with a bunch of goblin kills because, well, we're here, might as well, right, I guess. I don't really remember why I did that. So after that slight distraction, onto the bank it was. Because, you know, if we're doing this, might as well be doing it right. What do I mean by that? Dropping everything. Other than that weird ass lamp that I still carry around. Also, as I'm not quite sure what I'm signing up for, I bring some emergency funds and some emergency fish. Now that we're all prepared for, I hope, everything that could be, we're ready to go. There's but one thing to mention. During all of this process, I for the first time enjoyed runescape socialization. There were two people philosophizing about the great questions of life. I love this game. All right, after getting rid of all that junk left over, we approached the nearest cows. I finally did it. My odyssey, it comes to an end. Or now it begins for real, I don't really. Anyways, this is the part where I now just click on one cow after another, ask for a dance, and after we part ways involuntarily, I think, I pick up the leftovers. I'm a little bit unsure why the field is already littered with loot, but but I considered, you know, might as well. I don't know how RuneScape common loot courtesy really looks like, but given the fact that it takes some time to appear, I'm assuming players have enough time to pick it up or choose whether they want it or not. This obviously made things a lot faster for me. My appreciation at that point to whoever these guys are. Also noteworthy maybe, the initial strategy was I'm picking up everything to increase dopamine points of, well, everything. So as my inventory started filling up, I first of all got rid of the bones to get my prayer leveled up literally and following that system to the end makes my inventory look like this so back to the city it is or back to the kitchen to be more precise here we up our cooking by getting ourselves some steak done or some done steak either way i also level up in cooking which changes the choice i have what i want to cook i am slightly confused about this one to be honest i guess i want to cook cooked meat i think <laughs> but yeah well turns out i i fucked that up regardless so I don't really know what was up with that choice to be honest. State of confusion. Well, anyways, we dump all of that stuff into our bank. But before we leave, one thing to mention, the two guys are still going at it. While I was gone farming, they are still socializing. I can't imagine any other game where that would happen. But I can't be held back by it social interaction let's be honest here i have more important things to do so i'ma run it back by well yet again quite literally running back there's one little difference this time i actually had to do the work myself ridiculous turns out someone else showed up at this place as well and was doing pretty much the same thing as i as all the cowhide was already picked up fine guess i'll actually play the game this time besides that change nothing changed my strategy was still the same i buried all the bones and then brought 
this pattern of meat and cowhide back to town. And you know how the rest goes. We enter the kitchen, burn steak, level up cooking, top floor with the crazy view, and everything goes into the bank. And let's not forget, the two guys are still at it. Impressive, actually. I am impressed. Only for a quick moment, as you know, we have more important matters at hand. Also, as you can see in my inventory, we're getting rid of all the meat, and I've also gotten rid of the emergency fund and emergency fish, as fighting cows turns out not to be that emergency heavy. One other thing to mention is that given the fact that cooking is progressing way faster than crafting is, I'm not picking up the meat anymore. I also don't bother with the bones anymore either to be honest, but that is mostly a laziness. No real strategy behind that really. It's all about the cowhide now. And given that I've streamlined my cowhide production, I will now also streamline the narrative process. So back at the bank once more, we're dropping all the cowhide and the tiny bit of emergency fund that ended up being there because of well selling stuff. I kind of didn't calculate that properly, I think also wasn't to be avoided. But most important news is the socializing has stopped them. I'm, I'm genuinely sad actually, but I'm sure someone made a friend and that makes me happy. But I yet again digress. In a streamlined fashion, I pick up the cowhide that isn't mine. And in a streamlined fashion, I also tell you that I do this whole cowhide run two more times. This leaves us at 106 cowhide. I don't know if that's enough or how much that is in relation to anything really. I stopped because, well, this is where the League Worlds game ended and I kind of did that while I was watching those. Also it seemed like a, a good number to make progression I feel like but well I'm yet to find out. I grab my money, my needle and my thread as that is all I need and off I go. To Adventurer John actually because all of that fighting you know made me the owner of a very new sword. I once again press examine. Nah just kidding. I read one of your comments telling me that these numbers actually have nothing to do with the stats of the sword but are some form of pricing that I will come across very very soon and understand what it's actually about. So I obviously open the character thing and look at that. Switching the swords makes those numbers bigger. As long as some numbers get bigger, I'm, I'm happy. You know, bigger is better. Remember that guys, the harsh life lessons learned in this game. Beautiful. But enough of that. We are still having more important matters to attend. I cross a well familiar bridge, reach a well familiar gate, pay a well familiar price. And once more, we are back. And hopefully I'm a bit more well prepared this time. But now that I know where all the things that I need are, maybe I'm actually getting things done for once. So I fill my inventory with the first batch of cowhide, then we're heading on over to our boy Ellis, and through the power of right click, we turn all of this into leather. Eager to will actually get things done, I start making some gloves right here and there, until I ran out of thread once more. Maybe not too planned out after all. But I know just the guy who could sell me some. You know, it might be smarter to do the whole craft in here anyways but oh well a couple of hand gear later just so I can make a bit more of the hand gear. Amazing. But do you know what happens at level 6? Nothing. We just do more of the gloves. I'm not so sure why I was so eager to do this just like a few hours earlier. But anyways, <laughs> I cross the street once more to get rid of all these gloves, making an absolute fortune. This is also where I found out the more of something a merchant has, the less money he actually gives. Ah, beautiful. Anyways, to stick to the streamlined fashion, here's how the whole process goes continue. Obviously we kept running back and forth from getting cowhide and making leather out of it, only interrupted by the occasional actual crafting. A few gloves later. And we're actually a step ahead. You know, that's funny because boots and step ahead. Nah, anyways, we're doing boots now. And I'm quite happy to see that they actually give me more dopamine points than making gloves. So at least something. Quite the boots later, level 8 and 9. And we have another gear piece available. So you know that drill until we hit 11. And we can finally craft our very own upgrade, I'm assuming. I really hope those aren't worse than, than the boots we already have. But... I'd rather try it out, to be honest. But, well, it is an upgrade. We are not done yet, though. Bunch of leather left still and bunch of additional footwear to be made. And then there's the last trip and the last pieces of footwear. And level 14 it is, which allows me to make my own leather armor. Just in time with four pieces of leather left. I couldn't have planned this any better. I'm a genius at this game. Incredible. So here it is. The grand finale of my crafting journey, I guess. Making two pieces of armor because I once more run out of 
of thread. God damn it. Before I try it on though, I do finish the crafting job. And there it is. The ultimate upgrade. A chest armor piece. Wow. Now that made it sound way more anticlimactic as it really is. That was a genuinely rewarding grind, I have to say. Also, the way that it played out perfectly in the end obviously helped, but oh well. I sell the rest of the gear and actually come out ahead in terms of gold as well, so this overall works. Not so sure why I'm surprised about it, but I'm still a little suspicious, I think. Now there's but one thing to do. We have to try it out. I go to the gate, but wait. I remembered something. To be honest, not so sure why I haven't utilized this thing yet. It definitely could have come in clutch at certain points. But anyways, I'm saving myself 10 gold right here. And off we go. 